The year was 1874. Ulysses S. Grant was president, and at a small shop at 119 South Walnut Street, craftsmen began making copper kettles. And while the world has changed, inside these walls, the tradition continues. Copper kettles have been made in this location for over 140 years. It all started in 1874. The reason it started was apple butter. Everyone was making it, and that required a copper kettle. But 1880 was a bad year for apples. So they weren't getting orders for apple butter kettles, so they diversified started making Swiss cheese kettles, candy kettles, and timpani, kettle drums for orchestras. Today, in the same little shop in New Cyrus, Ohio, they're still making kettles, and they're still producing handmade timpani shells. These are destined for the Adams Drum Company in Holland. The design is based on a drum manufactured in Dresden, Germany in the 1880s. But ours are unique because we can make them an even thickness all the way through and we hammer them. The even thickness and hammer-hardened copper results in a unique signature sound, prized by symphonies around the globe. They are, as I understand, the only handmade timpani in the world. If that sounds expensive, it is. A finished drum starts at around $25,000 but only a fraction of that money finds its way back to Bucyrus. Whether it's drums or kettles, virtually everything is made in the shop. We make our own handles and bales. Making a handle is a blacksmithing operation. Hammers are used to shape the copper but they do more than that. The hammer strikes actually harden or temper the metal. It's the only way copper can be strengthened. From 1874 until 1912, everything was 100% hand done. The power hammers were put in around 1912. They came out of Detroit. They were used in the automobile industry for shaping fenders and body parts for cars. The magic is in the transformation, how a flat sheet of metal is hand-fashioned into the graceful curves of a gleaming kettle. We cut it out using a power shear, and then we take it into the next room, we fold it in half, we wrap it around a stake, and we cut notches in it, bend every other tab up, and that will form what we call a clamp. We overlap the seam, hammer the clamps down, and that will hold it in place until we braze it. All seams get treated with a mixture of granulated brass, borax, and water. The seam is placed over a low flame to dry the water and pull the brass through the seam. Then things really heat up. Then we will put it on the, the fuel oil forge, which is a fuel oil and air mixture forge, and that will heat the seam to a red hot, and melt the brass through the seam. When we get done with that, we will grind the excess brass off and hammer the seam. And after the seams are all hammered, it goes into the sulfuric acid tank, and that will clean all of the discoloration off from the brazing any flux that's left on there that cleans that off. We will bring it out and rinse all the, the acid off, dry it over a low heat so that uh, it doesn't tarnish, and then it's ready to planish. And the planishing is hammering the kettle. We'll hammer the entire kettle, and that hardens and brightens the copper. Upstairs, the lip of the kettle is prepared for the iron reinforcement rod. The rod is fed into a machine 
that bends it into a circle. It's hammered to close the circle and true the rod. Then it's added to the kettle. This is the handle we made on the forge downstairs earlier, and we're going to attach it to the candy kettle with copper rivets. For nearly 150 years, little has changed within these walls. The sound of the hammers, the heat from the fires, and the hands of men shaping metal. Generations of workers have come and gone. I started, started to work here in June of 1976. I didn't know anything about working copper. Rex has worked here about 29 years, and he can do just about everything in the shop. He does a nice job, and he's a good guy. Coppersmiths are a rare and dwindling breed. For Steve and Rex, it was time to share their combined 70 years of experience with a new employee, a young man named Sam. It's kind of a hard position to be in. You just try to, to watch and teach a person that's trying to learn, try to show them what you can, and hopefully their mind is in the same area that yours is. See where Rex will show me, then I just have to pick up as I go. There's no real type of training for it. He's coming along real well. As far as I know, they're there isn't anybody in the United States that's still doing copper work the way we do. I guess we kind of feel like dinosaurs, the last of the line that's still doing the work that we do. We're keeping the history going. If you love Our Ohio Television, then you'll enjoy being an Our Ohio supporter. For just $25, you can enjoy Our Ohio Magazine, support Ohio food and farms, and stay connected to what's happening in your community. Visit supportourohio.org.